Okay, guys. We're going to start. We're going to start. Um, if there's a few more people, they'll they'll wander in. Please make room for them. Uh, for those of you who, who might not know me, or those who haven't seen me for a while, my name is Dr. Ross. Welcome. Got a very cool topic to talk about tonight. One that is kind of one of my personal favorites. It's actually out of out of all the research I read, and I, and I, as you guys probably know, I read a lot of research. This is like the part that's exploding, and so specifically exploding on something called proprioception. Who's ever heard of proprioception? You just read it on the sheet. <laughs> so, um, one of the things that that has come out, and it's probably the biggest uh, bash against chiropractic is that chiropractic is not scientific. And what chiropractors do is they crack joints and no nothing else. And so all these sort of case studies about people whose diabetes was cured, uh, people that got rid of their cancer, people that got rid of all their other stuff, they say, oh, it's just coincidence. They just happen to be going to a chiropractor and for whatever reason. But this new line of research is showing that your body is, is wired, so you've got motion sensors within all your joints, all your muscles, all your ligaments, your tendons, all have motion sensors. And those motion sensors, when you stimulate them on a regular basis, has a real physiological effect on not only your brain and your neurology, but your health in general. So that's why we say max movement is so vital. It is a huge, huge, huge component. And guess where the most proprioceptors or the most motion sensors are in your body? In your spine. So why is chiropractic so beneficial? Well, there's a multitude of reasons, but one of the big, one, big ones is that it keeps you moving. It keeps those proprioceptors, those motion detectors stimulated, which bombards your brain with proprioception, that positive impulse, the positive impulses that our movement. A lot of people ask me about the, vi and we'll go over this, but a lot of people ask me, what's the, the deal with the vibration? Guess what vibration does? It, it stimulates your proprioceptors. It puts movement in your body. I always say movement is life. You're, if you're in a, a state of movement, you've got power and energy sh surging through you the way God intended for you. See, God intended us for, for us to be movable, to, to, to make things happen, to create great things, and to, to go great places. He didn't intend us to just sit in front of a computer and not stimulate, you know, not stimulate our brains, not stimulate our minds. So, not that I have anything against computers. I've decked my whole office out with computers, but that's, that's the thing. We've got to keep in motion. Let's see if this is going to work. There we go. So we talk about the essentials, and of course, max movement is one of the essentials. We call it the second essential, but it's, it's one of these five essentials. The five essentials, of course, is minimize drugs, toxins, and surgery. In other words, minimize the medical stuff. Maximize your nerve supply, which is a major component of why chiropractic works well. We want to get this nervous system firing at its peak potential. Maximize nutrition, goes without saying. Maximize oxygen and lean tissue, and actually I would say movement, lean tissue, and oxygen. And then maximize your peace and relationships, which is your mind. Maximize your mind, maximize your faith. So today we're talking about maximize your movement, your oxygen, and your lean tissue. Notice that it's one of five. Now in the medical world, God bless them, but in the medical world, they really look at two things. They look at exercise and nutrition, right? Diet and exercise. In fact, those commercials kill me when they say, when diet and exercise didn't work, I, my doctor chose Lipitor or whatever it is. And it's like, guess what? Diet and exercise always work, 100% of the time. It's just you didn't do it right or you didn't continue with it. But there's, that's only two out of five. All five are vital components. If you want to be a healthy you, you want to be the true healthy person that God intended for you to be, you work on all five of these things. So today we talk primarily about the, the movement, the oxygenation, and the muscle mass. Because, and it's three separate components. In fact, we talk about the three components. Maximize your movement, maximize your oxygenation, maximize your muscle mass three separate components. 
Those three separate components should be worked on together, right? Not at the same time per se, but you're working on those three components, not just one. So for example, someone that goes and says, yeah, I exercise, well, what do you do? Oh, I go walking. Okay, so you go walking and yeah, on lunch times I go walking. That's my exercise. Are they really working on movement? Is walking taking your body through its full mo movement? Are they really increasing muscle mass? A little bit, a little bit, but not to a great extent. Are they increasing your oxygenation to some degree? But there's ways that you need to work on those things to get the most out of them. But here's the cool thing. If you do these three things, if you work on these three things, and we'll talk about how you do those today, but if you do those three things, you're gonna get phenomenal results. Phenomenal results. Now, am I talking about you're gonna look great in a bikini, and you're gonna be, you know, get the six pack abs, like the, you know, the ab roller, and all these uh, infomercials you see? Notice they pick all the beautiful people to do those things? They don't pick regular people? No. Well, yeah. <laughs> Anyone want to leave? Go. <laughs> so, but you're going to be the best you you can be. You're going to be stimulating those proprioceptors. You're going to be stimulating those muscles. You're going to increase your energy and increase your metabolism. You know, when, when people say, what's the value of exercise? I mean, you can pretty much pick your, pick your thing. Every, there's, there's nothing that is not benefited through exercise of some degree. Isn't that true? So your mind is benefited. You, you have better concentration, you have better relationships with your husband, with your spouse, with your, your teachers, with your friends, your neighbors, because you feel better, you feel better about yourself, your self-confidence is better, your metabolism is better, you look better, you, you're strong. I mean, go on and on and on and on. So when we talk about you know, some of the benefits, of course there's tons and tons and tons of things, including internal stuff, like your hormone levels are better. Like your LDL and your HDL, your cholesterol levels are better. Like your improved learning, your, your aging, you look less old than you really are. All those things are as a positive things of doing those three aspects though. So you gotta work on those three aspects. So, of course, helps your mood, reduces depression, controls or prevents diabetes. So you say, how does exercise control blood sugar? But guess what, it does. So increasing that proprioception helps with diabetes, believe it or not, without changing anything in your diet. Protects against falls, number one cause of death in the elderly. So especially with some of the elderly patients I have, none of them is in here, of course. Yeah. But, <laughs> but uh, with the elderly, that's, that's a huge component of falling. Number one reason why elderly people go to the hospital is they had falls and they broke bones and so forth. So when you exercise, it helps strengthen your bones. So it helps that, that calcium level in your bones, but it also makes you more balanced. So your, your strength is there, your coordination is there, your concentration is there, all those kind of things. Speeds up metabolism, we talked about, reduces risk of injury, all these kind of things. I mean, name it, it's probably a value of a good, solid movement program. Notice that I don't say exercise, because what does everyone think of when I say exercise? Uh, hate exercise, don't want to do it, you know, all that stuff, even athletes. Athletes like to sweat and all that kind of stuff, but when you say the word exercise, it's like, yeah, not really too happy with exercise. But when you say movement, it's like, oh, dancing, movement, you know? And so that's why we substitute movement instead of exercise. 87% of Americans don't exercise regularly. So when I ask, and, and sometimes I'll go into the school and I'll ask kids you know, about exercise, and they'll say, yeah, you need to exercise, we've been told that, and I talk to adults and they all say, yeah, exercise is very important, yet almost 90% don't exercise. Almost 90%, that's, that's gigantic, 90%. So one of the things that I t talk about when we talk about movement max movement, is regardless if you have it all figured out, do something. That's my first key. Start, take a step, do something. Go for a walk, lift a weight. Well, I don't know how to do it correctly, who cares? Well, I might hurt myself, good. You won't do that again. So you gotta take that step. You gotta make that choice. 
And with some of the movement stuff, anyone can do it. I've shown kids, I've had a lineup of kindergartners that I taught these things to. So they learn, learn a lot quicker than you guys. But you guys can do it, I promise you. So signs of poor oxygen acquisition, fatigue, sleep disorders, joint muscle pain, low blood sugar, infection, injury, memory loss, depression. These are all things that, that are going to happen to you if you do not exercise or you do not move. You don't get your movement in there. So let's talk about the first part, which is max movement, moving your body. So the goal is to move every joint in your body through its full range of motion at least once per day. So I'll, I'll help you out. So we're going to do our hand. So everyone put up their hand. So you're just going to flex your fingers nice and and just flex it all the way into a fist, flex that thumb, flex your wrist. And then slowly but surely extend everything back out and bring your wrist back. Oh, wow. We've moved all those ranges, all those joints through our full range of motion. See how hard that was? We just bombarded our brains with proprioception. So if you do that on a regular basis, sometimes people ask me, I mean, what, you know, how do you do this stuff? Have you ever watched a cat? When a cat wakes up, it goes through its full, it, it, that cat moves its joints through its full range of motion. Dogs do the same thing. And, and that's, you wonder why you pick up a cat and it feels so limber and loose and all that kind of, every single time it wakes up. No, it sleeps 18 hours a day too. But, so benefits of doing that, increased flexibility and movement. So if you move your hands through a nice full range of motion, you think your hands are going to move better than if you don't? Of course. Decreased degeneration and scar tissue buildup. So here's the thing with the, the human body. Now, I don't want to freak anyone out. Actually, I do want to freak you out. <laughs> so the thing with the human body is you've got cells going around. And I, I like to picture this as little spiders. So you've got little spiders, literally hundreds of millions of them, that are running through your body, and they're laying webs down. Those webs are collagen fibers. And those collagen fibers make up scar tissue. Their job is to run around your body and lay down webs. That's what they do. They, they're basically collagen laying spiders. And so if you have an injury, more spiders are attracted to that area and they all start laying collagen down. And they lay it in all sorts of different directions. And that's basically the, the, how a scar forms. Now there's a lot more to it. And the reason why I, I don't want to freak you out is I don't want to think you have spiders running around your body. These are like cells, chondroblasts. So these cells are the basis of scar tissue. And when we do injure ourselves, that, the, all those collagen fibers in, in all sorts of different directions all tend to contract and pull the wound closed. And then as we break up some of the collagen fibers, they should all be, the ones that are left should all be in line.